Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Glad to see you. So today I want to talk about, or this week rather, since we're doing this every Saturday, I want to talk about things to do when you've lived in Vietnam for so long, because things get kind of redundant, kind of boring. So what do you do after that 70 year mark? Because most people like myself have kind of done everything. So what do I do day to day just to stay busy? Also, I want to recap on the last video. I know it hasn't really got a lot of views. Check it out if you want. It's about it was about the lady that didn't that has disagreements about how she feels about living in Vietnam. I know the video gets a lot of flack. I've read her comments about it, and I've seen that a lot of people that attack her are Vietnamese people that have never been abroad, and it's been people that just have yellow fever that have never been to Vietnam. And I, and I want to say kind of a flaw in Vietnamese culture, and I'll say this here. Vietnamese have a hard time taking feedback. They don't, they love to give feedback and tell you what you're doing right and wrong, mostly wrong, but they don't want to hear when you have feedback about their flaws. And I've run into this a lot, like being a teacher back in the day, uh, working for firms, law firms and stuff out here, having my own business and having staff training them. Anytime you give a Vietnamese person any feedback about their country, their ways, what they're doing, their life, their study habits or anything in that regard, they usually take it as an insult and then do the opposite of it most of the time or just keep doing what they're doing because they don't like it. They don't like to be told they're wrong or anything like that. That's kind of the, 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 the mindset in Vietnam. It's the mindset in China is we're number one. Everything we do is perfect. So I want to talk about the seven things. So the first thing we're going to talk about is get group sports, group activities. So in Vietnam, understand habits habits hobbies aren't really a thing people don't really go out and do stuff like you'll see in like america and i'm going to compare a lot of this to america because it'll give you guys at least a base standing of what i'm talking about in, in america we have gyms tennis baseball fields soccer fields football fields we have all these things big parks like dude the parks in america are like the size of three city blocks in vietnam like and they're normal in, in america for say right so we also, with that being said, we have limited space in Vietnam because the parks here usually are pretty small. But when there are parks, half of them are turned into vending machines or not vending machines, but they're turned into areas for vendors and people to sell stuff. So it's kind of hard. But things that I, I do out here and some things you can do is tennis is somewhat, if you can find yourself a gym, Vietnamese don't really play tennis too much. It's more of a Western thing. They're more on the badminton side. So if you're into badminton, that's huge out here. You can actually just go to a park and play badminton and you'll get, you'll find a lot of Vietnamese that want to play with you, be older, younger, teenagers, mid-age, old, just grandparents. So badminton is a huge thing out here. I mean, I think what, five, six years ago, Vietnam won gold in the Olympics for badminton. So it is a serious thing out here. So if you love badminton or you can switch from tennis to badminton, you will find a huge crowd out here. And while you're, sorry, there's a fly in front of me. And while you're at the park, another big thing that you'll see out here is arm wrestling. As surprising as that sounds, uh, Saigon, this is actually huge. There's a guy that, I think his name is Dustin. He does YouTube videos. And he's a huge arm wrestler out here. So if, you are, if you're into arm wrestling, that's a huge thing. The third one is hacky sacking. Um, but they don't use a hacky sack. They use like a birdie almost. Like I'll try to put an image somewhere around here about it. But it, you pretty much just kind of, it's a Thailand sport that got brought over to Vietnam. So it's not really a Vietnamese sport, it's, it's a Thai sport, but it's fun to play. It's hard though, let me tell you, man, I got into it a few times with some older people and they just kicked my butt in this game. So it is fun to learn, it'll keep you active and get you outside. And then kind of the things you can do by yourself is hitting up the gym um, or just bike riding. If you like, to, I like to go out and do like 30, 35 kilometer rides. I will warn you though, bike riding can be kind of tricky because of the bad driving and the noise, the pollution. Uh, personally, I, I, I'm kind of near Vong Tao, but not in it. So people act a little more civilized, I guess, when it comes to driving. But the honking, it really makes it hard unless you have like soundproof headphones on. Just because when you're riding a bike and you hear the honking, it's not so loud. You know, kind of, you know, physics, it just kind of passes through you. But when you're on a bicycle, actually pedaling, when people honk, it rings your head. So it can be kind of frustrating. You can't really go on the highways because they're they're pretty uncomfortable to drive on the the driving is ridiculous motorbikes are all over the place they're honking at you and stuff so i wish you the best of luck i i get in about 20 to 25 kilometers a week on my bike but i usually go between 10 to 1 o'clock every day or every time just because this is when all the vietnamese are sleeping so it's finally quiet right number two 
places to chill. Where to go in Vietnam? This will be a fast one. Um, in Vietnam, you're pretty limited because there's not a lot of places to go. You don't have libraries, city centers, and stuff like that so much. But coffee shops, restaurants, karaoke, if you're into karaoke, and then shopping malls, if you like to just kind of chill at shopping malls. Shopping malls in Vietnam are not Vietnamese, which I think is a good thing. And a lot of them, like they're owned by Thailand companies, they're owned by Singapore companies. Uh, there's Apollo Center out here that's owned by Japan. These are very modernized, modernized places. They have modern stuff. Vietnamese that shop in these spots are trying to buy Western stuff, right? And they attract a lot of Western people. And they're kind of cool to hang out with, man. I usually all go to the food court and I'll meet some Western people. We just sit down and talk. So it's a cool spot to kind of chill, meet some people. Same with the coffee shop. I kind of go there just to be alone. Uh, restaurants, I want to kind of get into that. Restaurants can be interesting. I'm going to give you my advice on food in Vietnam. Um, international food in Vietnam is typically bad. Um, and you'll hear a lot of people say it's really good. It's really good. These are usually people who have never left Vietnam. They're usually Vietnamese people. And, and I understand if you've only had it in one spot, you don't really have anything to balance the food with. But international food in Vietnam, being sushi, hamburger, hot dogs, anything like that, unless you're going to Burger King or McDonald's or KFC, it's going to not taste right. It's not going to taste right. So some examples is uh, international food. Usually the taste is tainted into more of a Vietnamese flavor, which I understand. Vietnamese will always say, well, they make it more for us, which to me makes me have this thinking of why is it international food anymore if it's turned into Vietnamese flavor? You know what I'm saying? So ideally traveling the world, filling up all these passports, I think Vietnam has the worst international food in the world. The sushi, the kimchi, um, the hamburgers they make out here, it's just, it's not Western, it's Vietnamese food. You know, like the sushi literally is cooked and it's full of sugar. The hamburgers usually are 80% bread and the meat patty is just pathetic. Like it's literally pathetic. Uh, pizza is really hit and miss, but like it's really common to see seafood pizza and they'll put like seashells and shrimp on it, but not even take off the skin. So when you open the pizza, you have to like prepare it to even eat it which isn't even seafood pizza. If you've been to Japan, like I, I lived in Japan for a while, and the seafood pizza there is really good. And you take it out of the box, you just start eating it. Like the oysters and everything's already on the pizza cooked ready. In Vietnam, they don't do that. And when you talk to them about it, they just say it's normal, which it's not normal. And then finally, like I've seen peanut butter pizzas. Put, me, put in the comments, would you ever eat a peanut butter pizza? If I can find a picture, I'll put it up here. But I saw this post, it was just like, peanut butter pizza with baked bananas on bread and they called it a pizza and it was like it was like 15 or 16 dollars for this <laughs> like who's buying this shit but in all international food in vietnam is pretty shatty my advice for you with food in vietnam avoid the chains avoid avoid like vietnamese chains like vietnamese pho restaurants and stuff like that they're not bad but they're very westernized tasty so the pho doesn't taste authentic for say my advice support the locals get the street food go to the hole in the wall for your pho if you want beef sour bucha go to a local person don't go to these corporation based things that they suck um i know in saigon they have this place called foi Ma, pho mai and they have like 50 restaurants around and they got some in hanoi their pho is probably the worst i've ever had in vietnam and it's like five or six dollars a bowl it costs the same as in america and it tastes like crap. Well, I mean, it tastes like American pho, I guess. But I didn't move to Vietnam to eat American food. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of a hit and miss in there. And then finally, the karaoke. If you like it, go for it. Number three, beaches and resorts. So you've been here for a while. You've probably been working. You've been a teacher. You've been kind of BSing and chilling. What you can do is start exploring the resorts. You can go to places like Hoi An, Haiphong, Halong Bay, and check out their five-star resorts. If you're living here for five, six years, you're probably pretty rich. I mean, we make a lot of money doing anything out here. So ideally, you should be able to afford these. A lot of these places just cost a couple hundred a month or a, a month, a couple hundred a day. And just rent them. Like there's a spot. I don't have pictures of these, unfortunately. But if you go to Hanoi, they have one that's on a – no, no, in Haizang. It's a five-star resort that's on a cliff over a mountain that if you look down, you see China. It's very beautiful in Vietnam. Um, you have a few in um, – Haiphong, which is a really nice spot in the north. Hollow Bay is another one. Uh, Phan Thiet. Is, it's okay in Phan Thiet, but the problem with it is it's very Vietnamese populated. 
in regards to it, it, it brings a lot of tourists that are Vietnamese, like Saigon people and stuff. So a lot of the resorts in, in Phan Thiet are very loud. It's always yelling at karaoke. Uh, if you wake up, like I used to wake up in the morning to take a jog at the beach or on the street, and I'm constantly dodging beer cans and trash and spit and piss and stuff. It's, it, it's sad because Phan Thiet is a beautiful city. But the locals kind of destroy it. Next one is going to a bus station. This is something my ex taught me that I was dating when I first moved out here. She used to take me to these bus stations. This is stuff that we did back when I first moved here. But I think it's kind of a cool idea to do if you've been here forever. Because you probably haven't seen all of Vietnam. Um, take a Vietnamese friend with you. I, I, I strongly recommend this. Because you're need, unless you speak Vietnamese. Go to a bus station and just pick a spot you don't know. When you go to a bus station, it'll have buses that'll go to like 20 to 30 different locations around southern, northern Vietnam or central. Even. Start pointing at places you've never, you don't even, you've never even heard of. Get on that bus and just go for two days and just enjoy it and see what it is. One thing I always tell people that live in Vietnam a long time is to get out of the city. Don't stay in Saigon. Saigon is not a rep representation of what Vietnam truly is. Vietnam is a beautiful country. The food is amazing. The people are great. But when you live in Saigon, you start getting pissed off. Your anger becomes more. The people are usually pretty pushy. It's loud. It's dirty. It's polluted. It's just a shithole, man. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just it's it, it burns on you really fast. I want to compare it to like a U.S. state, like maybe New York or something. But even New York has like standards of cleanliness. You know what I mean? So get outside of the big cities. Go to a bus station. I used to do this every once a month We on the weekend. We would just go to a bus station, pick a spot. We would go there for three or four days. Just take a vacation. It's random. Dude, I've been to some weird places. I've been to some cool places. I've been to some places I'm, I was scared of. And I've just kind of been all over Vietnam. I mean, it even took me to Phu Qua, which was an island. I pointed at one time. I remember, she's like, point at one. And I pointed. She's like, she did, her face like glowed. I'm like, oh, I guess I picked something good. And next thing I know, we're on a boat ride for three hours, pretty much going to Thailand. And there's this little island south of Vietnam. It was, and I went there during 2016, 17, when they didn't even like really start construction and westernizing it. So it was just open beach land with a military base. It was beautiful, man. Number six, we're going to talk about driving through Vietnam. This is something a lot of people do when they, on their early on time in Vietnam, or some people just come to Vietnam to do this. Drive through Vietnam. Rent a bike in Saigon and drive all the way up to Hanoi. It takes you about three to five weeks to do. It'll cost you about $1,500 to $2,000 if you drink. If you don't drink, and I'm thinking about myself because I've quit drinking. I'm thinking about doing a video on that, but not yet. I spent about $1,800 on the total trip, and I was drinking heavily. So if you don't drink, I think you can manage it with like seven, $700 to $1,000 the whole trip. Enjoy it all. See all the sights. Do everything you want. And... Still have money left over. And we ended up taking a train back down south with our bikes on the bus. So it's not too shabby, man. So check that out. Do the trip. Another thing I like to do, this one sounds stupid, but I used to do it in Hawaii. Get a backpack. Go buy a backpack. Put in some stuff, like buy toothbrush, toothpaste, like that you can travel. Not your original one. Get some clothes. Pack them in there. Put on some stupid shorts, some sandals. And go to a hostel. And just act like a tourist for the week or the weekend. This is something I do to kind of refresh my mind in Vietnam and kind of remind myself of the coolness of the, the tourism of it, right? Is just go to a hostel and just act like a tourist. Say, hey, where, where are you from? You know, if, if they ask you where you're from, just be like, oh, I just got here from Thailand. Or, you know, make up a story. You know, think of this like an elaborate lie. The lie is for the benefit of all. And then start talking to these other tourists, and these other people about their stories about traveling and stuff. I think this is one of the coolest things I do next to pointing at a bus station. But this one takes a whole lot less effort, obviously, right? Number seven, just get married. <laughs> I know this one sounds weird because I'm, not, I'm kind of an anti-married person. But once you get here after seven years, you've kind of seen the list I've went through already. It gets kind of boring. And Vietnam doesn't have a lot to do. Vietnam is not a modern country. It's I don't know what the term developing even means because most of the developing is being done by Japan, Sweden, or America in this country. It's not being really done by Vietnam. So I don't know what the term developing really means in this country. The poverty is still pretty bad. Everything's kind of where it is. So with that being said, there's not a lot to really do in this country after five or six years. And I know you can say, oh, we well, just go to another country. Some people actually just want to retire here. Like there's a, a big retirement country. It's the Philippines, for example. And it kind of runs into the same similarities that I've talked to with my friends. You kind of run out of things to do. So what do you do in Vietnam? Get married. Get a wife. 
she might be 18. You know, <laughs> that's kind of what people out here do is they just like, they'll be 60, 65, they'll marry a 25 year old that has a couple of kids or something like that. Right. So you can definitely just get married as long as you can kind of, you've adapted to the trash, the noise, the, the pushing the lines and all the, the kind of negative things you've kind of adapted to. If you can adapt to this, my, my advice is just settle down. Honestly, because after seven, eight years, and I'm kind of at that point too, where I'm just kind of like, I'm bored, right? And I'm, I'm, I don't want to get married. So I mean, to answer that question right now, I don't want to get married in Vietnam. I, I have no interest in marrying into this type of system, if that makes sense. So I'm thinking about traveling. Unfortunately, with the whole sickness going on, it, it makes it very hard to go anywhere else right now. But in regards to what to do, just get, get married or I don't know, do something like I, I actually live in a small village. I rented a, a pretty big house and I've soundproofed a couple of rooms while well, I'm working on it. And I'm just doing online stuff. I'm doing, I'm doing podcast guest features. I'm doing these videos with you. I have my main channel, David rock, where I talk about politics and other stuff. So I'm just kind of doing stuff that I can do because I have a lot of money and nothing but free time. So I'm taking advantage of it. And some people, they just need that, you know? You just need your free time to write a book. Maybe you want to write a book. Maybe you want to get into acting or web development or something like that. Learn a new skill. This is the time to do it. And you can afford it and you have nothing but time. So you might as well use it, right? So I hope that helps. The seven things to do in Vietnam after seven years. So let me know in the comments what you would do in Vietnam or what you've done in Vietnam if you already, if you already have or what you think about my ideas. And hit that subscribe button, dude. It does help out a great deal. Smash that like button. And guys, I will see you next video.